Hello, you bearded bastards, and allow me to welcome you to my first Q&A video. Kind of like a drawing video, I guess, except I'm not going to be doing a drawing like my normal drawings that I have in my videos. I'm going to be working on that thing as you see in the background there. And that there is a project. It's unnamed, so I don't really know what to call it but it's kind of like a cutaway view of a Dwarven Fortress. I'm doing it in MS Paint and I've been working on it for a while, but only in tiny little pieces. Actually, this is pretty nice to get a good chance to work on it a little bit. I don't intend on finishing it by the end of the video at all, but you know, I'll just have it on back there. It'll be interesting to see how far we can get. In case you were wondering, I, I have done a similar thing in the past. You may have seen it. I'll put that up on the screen right here. It's called Greed, the End of Duralthob. And I did that quite a few years ago now. And it was heavily inspired by Simon Swarwer's artwork he had done before, The Reclaiming of Cethalir. A very, very cool piece. I'll put that up on the screen too so you can see it. And I'll put links to both those things down below in the description just so you can see them if you want. Anyways, okay, let's get to it. Question the first. Asked by Noah Telford Reed. Noah asks, do you think you'll ever run out of ideas in Dwarf Fortress? And tangentially related, do you think you'll play any other games on the channel? Uh... Um, you know, honestly, I think it's impossible for me to run out of ideas for Dwarf Fortress. Like, they just kind of happen while I'm playing. Um, it's not even like I'm coming up with the ideas, really. They just, yeah, as I said, they just kind of happen at random and I go with the flow. So, no, no, I, I don't think I could run out of ideas. And do I think I'll play any other games in the channel? Um, yeah, probably from time to time. I don't have any plans to do any long series in other games at this point. You know, people are here to watch Dwarf Fortress and I do not want to betray my audience at all. I know some of you say, oh, it's okay and people won't mind, but you know, that's one person saying it. You can't speak for the entire audience. When you get down to it, everyone is here for Dwarf Fortress initially, even if a good portion of those people wouldn't mind some room world. You know, it's kind of a tricky thing. But yeah, I don't have any plans to do that in the future, but we'll see what happens. Next question, we have one from Comrade Kisa, who says, Okay, Krug, I am quite new to your channel and love it so far. Anyways, the thing I wanted to know was, what got you into making Dwarf Fortress videos on YouTube? That's kind of a tough one. Initially, I was just doing it because a lot of other people were doing it, and from what I saw, they had some success with it, and I thought, hell, maybe I can have some success too. But that was back when I was doing, you can still find these videos on my channel, Fortress Beast Battle, and... That was pretty much just straight up me playing the game with some very light editing and some interesting intros. Some people like them, but eh, they're not, they're not, I don't think they're that good, honestly. I kind of gave up the whole shtick after that, and in 2016, I was goaded into making more of them by my good friend Dwarf Comic, and that's when I started the Evil King series, which turned into Steel Clutches, and that's, you know, when it started really kind of taking off and I started getting interested in it. So yeah, initially I got everyone here can thank Dwarf Comic for getting me back into it. I would not have started making videos again if it wasn't up to him. And you know, even so, I kind of petered off for a while and stopped. I, I was going to stop making videos altogether. I was losing interest until I was given a shout out by my friend Marcus Aurelius LP, who unfortunately doesn't make videos on YouTube anymore, but he gave me a shout out and I got like 200 subscribers, which was goddamn amazing back then. But that really boosted my confidence and really made me keep going, keep it up, you know? And I'll say that after that happened, after I got that boost, that's when I really started going for it pretty much. I always kind of thought that people who made the Dwarf Fortress videos on YouTube weren't showing the game in its best light, I guess. That just sounds pretty bad. Like, you can only do so much when you're just showing a straight video of the game. You know, like people who aren't into Dwarf Fortress, don't know what's going on, aren't going to be able to pick that up easily. It's just not going to happen. It's like showing someone a book in a different language and being like, Oh man, the story is great. Look at this. Look at this story. Like, you know, you can ramble on and tell people what's going on in the book, but it only does so much. And I just wanted to show people who weren't into Dwarf Fortress what it could be about. <laughs> Boy, I got, I got a lot of questions to get through. And if I'm rambly like that on all of them, then whew, it's going to be a long video. Okay, moving on. Next question from Derek Drescher. Do you think there are any old fortresses you would boot up so we could take a look at our old favorite characters? Do you have a favorite old series? Perhaps Monster Killer? Mm, I don't really plan on booting up any of those old series ever. I don't plan on it, keyword there. I, I like to just kind of let stories lie after they're done. You know, I, I could pick it up, but I don't know. It's like you, you ever see a movie and then, you know, it's a great movie and then they come out with a sequel three years later. It's not anything you expected and the sequel was stupid as hell. Don't worry, I don't, wanna, I don't really want to risk that. It's nice to get a sequel to a movie that you really liked, but if the sequel's crap, then it kind of ruins the first movie, you know? 
just my own opinion, I guess. Uh, do I have a favorite old series? Perhaps Monster Killer. Um, Monster Killer was fun. It, it definitely was. Honey Stoker, um, to be quite frank, behind the scenes was a monster to control. I, I didn't really enjoy myself very often while playing that one. Um, I enjoyed myself well enough, but it was very difficult to manage those damn vampires. Spoiler alert, by the way, if you haven't watched any of my series, like, maybe you shouldn't be watching this or something, because there's going to be spoilers all through this thing. Back to the question, um, my favorite old series, you know, I had a lot of fun with, um, well, like, Steel Clutches is a series, but I think my, my favorite fort within Steel Clutches was Zaludadil, Future Lanterns, the above-ground fortress that was in a pine forest. I would say that was probably my favorite fortress, to be perfectly honest. It was a mess, it was not a normal fortress at all, but it had real character. I was a big fan of it. Hope that answers things well enough. <laughs> Moving on, let's see, next question from Ian Hodgetts, who asks, do you have any regrets in leaving your job to do YouTube full time? I'm guessing you missed the doggies. For those of you who don't know, I used to work at a dog kennel. I worked there for 15 years. I do miss the doggies, absolutely. But do I have any regrets in leaving my job? Um, no, no, I, I do not. It was hard work. I did it for 15 years and, you know, you tell people you're working in a dog kennel and that's the first thing they think is, oh man, dogs, you must love it there. Yes, I, lo I love dogs. I really do love dogs. But do I like cleaning up their diarrhea? No, not really. Do I like cleaning up just the messes all over the place all the time? No, really, no. Do I like dealing with the, the customers who, yes, I don't blame them for wanting me to take care of their dogs, but a lot of them are kind of over the top that's not pleasant and you know as i said i did it for 15 years i started that job when i was 16 years old so i mean it, it takes a toll after a while in the summer when there's 120 dogs you got to manage it gets to be a bit much i don't have any regrets no next question ebergar asks some time ago you mentioned the possibility of redoing old stuff like the hero of balance and usheng bagush is it still on the table Again, I don't know what the future holds, but I do not have any plans to do anything like that right now. I may have mentioned that before I went full time here with the YouTube stuff, J just because I thought I'd have a lot more extra time, but that has not panned out at all. You know, I I always think people are going to be curious why I don't do more because I'm, you know, I'm full time YouTuber. I can put all my time into this. And before, when I was still working at my job, I was able to do Monster Killer. I did Monster Killer while working my full time job at the kennel. And so you would think I'd be able to do more stuff now. But when I was working at the job and doing Monster Killer, like that was all I was doing, literally all I was doing. I didn't leave the house. This sounds pretty sad, but I would get out of work. I would jump on my computer immediately. I would draw, I would edit, I would record anything. And I mean, a lot of people like Monster Killer, but I was really just recording whatever the hell goddamn happened and throwing it out there. I would edit it up. And on top of that, I was still up to like, you know, two, three in the morning every night. I'd get three, four hours of sleep at most a night. And it wasn't, it wasn't good. By the end of that, like I had to make a choice. Like, am I going full time with this stuff or am I going to stop doing YouTube? Because I had to make a choice. I couldn't keep going. If I wasn't at my goal by the time Monster Killer ended, my uh, Patreon goal that is, I would have had to stop making videos because I couldn't handle anymore. It was a bit much. Nowadays though, I can do my videos and although they still take a long, long time to do, I get a little bit of time I can spend with my family, which is extremely important as you can imagine. And it's just not, it's not as painful as it was back in the day. I still probably spend way too much time on these videos, but it's manageable, we'll say. Just still, I, you know, I really hope one day I can figure out some way I could do more. I really want to. But until I can figure out a solution, not gonna happen, I don't think. One thing I could think to do is hire on an inker. I don't really know much about like how taxes work when you have employees and all that junk. So I'd have to look for like a freelance artist or maybe like a couple of them that could help me. But like, I think when they make comic books, so you have an artist who does things in pencil, and then you have the inker who comes in afterwards and inks everything out. That's the one thing I could think to do that would really help me out because drawing pictures takes a long, long time to do. And I, I'm not kidding when I say, you know, 30 hours a week minimum on just a drawing. I don't know, until I could figure it out, I couldn't put any more on my plate. Am I rambling? I, God, I ramble a lot, huh? Let's see, looking down the list here. That's five questions so far. My goodness gracious. Okay, let's, let's pick up the pace here. Roos asks, what was your favorite long series? Also, what was your favorite short for? Well, you know, that's kind of a difficult question. I liked all those, the three series I did, I like them all pretty equally. Um, as for the short forts though, I, 
I would have to say Skull Horror was my favorite one. And I'm sure there's a few people out there who agree. I've actually had people angry that I ended that series. It didn't go a full long series with it. But you know, that one ended. It was good. It was a well-behaved fortress. Just a bunch of good dwarves, a nice little arc there in terms of the story, interesting characters. But you know, it's time to end was there. That, that was it. There wasn't, it didn't have much left, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that was, I think my favorite short for it. KQ Raccoon asks, how do you feel about the graphical version coming out soon? Are you considering switching over when it's live, or maybe you'll feel it'll limit the imagination too much? Uh, I am very excited for the Steam version, to be perfectly honest, but whether I'll switch over, you know, I haven't quite decided. The only thing I'm really afraid of is, yes, that it will limit my imagination seeing those little icons all over the screen. But, you know, I think at this point, I'm so accustomed to just picturing things in my head that it wouldn't affect me too much. I think I'm just bound to imagine whatever the hell I'll imagine at this point. Not too sure if I will switch over, but I am thinking that I will. I will be looking through the comments afterwards just to see if, uh, you know, there's a riot started over that. Yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you think down below. Next question, Anna Schoenbach asks, is there a backstory for Splatterface? In terms of canon for like the world of Splatterface, no, no, no real backstory or anything. I kind of like to imagine that's where my, my Krug Smash avatar lives with Mrs. K there, just in a general like Dwarf Fortress world. It's pretty crazy, but you know, I think it works. Oh, on that same subject, Call Me Fluffy asks, are you going to do another Splatterface? I do intend to, yes, probably around the holidays. And I think I might keep it a yearly thing, adding just a little bit more to the world every year. Moving on, we have a slew of questions here from Soap going down the list. Number one, how do you do your narration? Is it pre or post production or a mix? I usually talk while playing, just edited to make it seem a bit cleaner. Uh, sometimes I will go back and re-record lines if I really screwed them up. Again, just to clean it up a little bit. Number two, what is the most challenging thing to draw for the videos? The hardest thing I have to draw are normal animals or humans because we know what they look like so well and I have to try to get it close to that. And so, yeah, that's, that's the biggest challenge for me, definitely. That and hands, I still don't have those pegged down. Normally I got these big old goofy hands or weird spindly pointy fingers, but eh, whatever. Number three, have you ever considered a behind the scenes video? Yeah, a lot of people have asked this. I don't think so. I just really don't think there'd be a lot to show, to be perfectly frank. Yeah, just a bunch of me sighing with frustration and talking to myself. <laughs> like, I could, but yeah, yeah, I don't really plan on it. Number four, have you ever considered trying out other games on the channel? Uh, well, we already kind of addressed this. No, not, not any real plans, no. Number five, have you ever considered streaming the actual gameplay of the episodes before making them fully? Nope. The times I've tried to stream in the past have been just a giant pain in the ass. You know, I'll start up a stream and it gets kind of laggy and meh. Plus it would just be another step to the process. You know, it's already, I have to focus on recording and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah it's, it's too much. Number six, I can't find this idea anywhere, but someone once floated the idea of a D&D &D show on the server. My Discord server, that is. I think you responded to it. In case I'm wrong, would you consider that? That's, again, something I would really like to do. It's around the terms of like, like another game on my channel, and it would just take up too much time. It already takes so much time to do this Dwarf Fortress thing that like, I mean, I could, it would be a good idea, but I couldn't do that and the Dwarf Fortress stuff at the same time. It would just be way too much. Uh, number seven, you must listen to something while playing. What is it? You know, I actually don't listen to much while playing Dwarf Fortress at all. It just kind of distracts me. So yeah, I guess this goes into the behind the scenes of why recording is so boring. It's literally just me sitting, staring at my computer and tapping the keyboard. That's really about all that goes into it. There's not that much. <laughs> I gotta focus, you know? You gotta have that focus. Number eight, and the last question from Soap, what is your most anticipated feature not added into the game? Most anticipated feature? You know, I'm really excited to be able to play different races. Toady has said in the past that he wanted to do something like that, and so he'd be able to play as goblins or humans or elves or whatnot. I just think that would be really cool. It would add so much to the game, just give, giving you that option, you know? Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to say that's my most anticipated feature, honestly. Magic's cool and all, but hmm. Moving on a little bit here, Brent is Gaming asks, what made you want to become a YouTuber? Well, you know, initially, popularity. I wanted to become popular, that's it. When you grow up as a nerd, you know, it's something you want. You wanna be popular, you want people to like you. So I think that's what got me started, honestly. If I'm shooting straight, yeah, yeah that's gotta be it. 
I got another question here uh, from Bren Tenkage. How did you meet Mrs. Smash and what's her thoughts on my fame? I met her at the dog kennel, actually. She was a co-worker. Uh, she was 16, I was 17. And, you know, before we had talked or anything, I think we were stuck in the kitchen at work just together, just real briefly. And, <laughs> you know, it was awkward. So I think I said something like, so do you play any video games? And she was like, yeah, <laughs> I play Vice City you know, Grand Theft Auto, and I think it was at that point I was like, oh, mama. <laughs> uh, she's not going to like I'm putting this in a video. But yeah, yeah, that's it. Just kind of went from there. Uh, what are her thoughts on my fame? Well, I hate to have to speak for her, but she's at work right now, and I'm doing this whole recording thing, so yeah, I'm going to. I say she's excited. She gets excited. I give her frequent updates, like a, like a child talking about <laughs> their good grades from school. Mrs. K, Mrs. K, I've got this many subscribers now. You know, that sort of stuff. Very good, Crug Smash. Very good. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, she's excited. She's excited. Uh, another question here from Bren. When more Cataclysm, lol. I don't know. Yeah, that's the best I could do. We'll see what happens. One last question. Any other games you'd love to try doing a one-shot or series on? Um, the top game that comes to my mind and one that many people don't bring up as a suggestion to me is AI Dungeon. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's a like, uh, it's a basically a neural network that just gives you prompts like a dungeon master, and you type in what you want to do, and it gives you just bizarre responses most of the time. But sometimes they're coherent, and it can be interesting. I kind of want to do that this past th this week here instead of this video. But I mean, I would have to draw pictures for it if I did do it, and. I mean, the pictures take a long, long time, so I, I wanted to keep things toned down this week just because I'm going into another long series, and I gotta be able to plan a little bit before this one. But yeah, I'd say AI Dungeon, one of the games I'd like to play the most for the channel. I would highly recommend you check it out, by the way. Free to play. I'll put a link to it down in the description below, if I remember. Let's see, moving on. We have some questions here from FlashTate98 slash Emperor13. What is your favorite food? Depends on my mood, simply. In fact, I can't see how anybody would have a favorite food. Do I have a favorite TV show? Well, removing my mask to show my normie face, I'd say my favorite show was The Impractical Jokers. I'll tell you, nothing gets me laughing quite like that goddamn show. I think I might die while watching that show. It's a serious concern. Moving on, Rico G. Wacko asks, how do you end up playing such a crazy game as DF? Well, my brother mentioned it actually. He was telling me about this crazy game where you play as a fortress of dwarves. Everything is highly simulated and detailed and a dwarven mother lost their baby because it got stuck in like a beer keg or something like that. And that piqued my interest. I forgot about it for a little while. Then I was like, oh yeah, that game there. Picked it up, started playing it and was completely overwhelmed for a couple days. Couldn't figure out how to do a blessed thing. And I think I just put it to the side in frustration. F completely forgot about it for another year. Picked it back up again and then, you know, was finally able to dig my hands in a little bit. Thanks to Captain Duck. Watched his tutorials on uh, how to play and that's what got me into it. Moving on, Rainin asks, is there an adventure mode series you'd like to do in the future with a large party of adventurers, a band of bastards, if you will? Yeah, I could see it happening. I have no plans to do anything. I don't often plan for much, but yeah, I could see it happening. Cohen Ballin asks, and actually before I get to that, I'm sorry if I pronounce anyone's names incorrectly. It's bound to happen. Cohen Ballin asks, do you also play DF when not making videos? In another world, maybe? Do you play other games? Uh, recently, I've been trying to play a little bit of Dwarf Fortress behind the scenes. Normally, I don't play any other games, really, though. Nothing in particular. You know, I'll pick up games every once in a while. But I don't really have a go-to besides Dwarf Fortress. Herbal Gamesman asks, Have you ever thought of doing Caves of... Is it Cud? Quad? I don't know. It's been suggested to me an awful lot, but I don't really know much about it. I've never picked it up. But from what I understand, it has potential. Moving on, Martin Ellis asks, When did you start using source lighting in your drawings? And are you enjoying making it look better and better every time now? Source lighting, what the hell does that mean? What, like shading and stuff? Uh, I don't know. At some point, I got these Copic, Copic markers here, whatever they're called. And yeah, I just kind of toy around with that. Another question here, when did you start adding lamps and candles into your forts? And yes, I like them for realism, gotta see what you're doing, right? Absolutely. When did I start doing that? Probably around Skull Horror, actually. It's fun to add those details in the background. Uh, back during Monster Killer, back to Monster Killer. When I was doing those, like the backgrounds in Monster Killer are extremely simple, usually just like a brick wall right behind a dwarf. Cause you know, it's what I had to do, keep things extremely simple. But now it's fun to go back and like, just do little details, little lamps and torches or shelves, things hanging on the walls. I got some extra time now so I can put it in. 
Uh, another question. At what point did I start using perspective in one and a two point to make your illustrations look just so much better? I don't know what that means. What does that mean? I'm not sure. If you can't tell, I don't have any formal art training. I just kind of draw stuff, I guess. It's taken a lot of practice, but I guess it's improving. That's what people tell me. Another question, when did background silhouette become one of your tools and how did it evolve with your lighting skills? I don't know what that means. Like a shadow behind a character? Is that a term? Is that like an art term? Yeah, I don't know. Next question, did Mrs. K evolve her color use with your lighting skills too? I have a feeling she would answer these questions pretty much like I would. We just kind of look at pictures online, like uh, usually like magic cards and stuff. Try to get ideas from there. Another question, now that you're doing small frames, can you do some dwarf selfies showing them with their dining and cuisine? I could, yeah, I mean, I could see that happening in a future fortress, definitely. That'd be a pretty good idea, actually, I think. I do like drawing dwarven cuisine. Moving on, we have some questions here from Hester K, who says, I always liked the Apeeve story you told way back when. Are there any other individuals that have stood out to you like that over the years? I try to make worlds and dig through legends mode from time to time, but it's difficult to find an interesting enough character that would be good to make a video around. You know, like you could find a character that went out and killed a dragon that killed their uncle or something like that. But like that, that'll be it for the most part. Like it's very quick little legends mode things. Nobody really has a, a saga associated with them. But yeah, I, I keep my eyes open. Just haven't really found anybody yet. Hester also says, uh, it's been nice watching my art change over time. It feels like you're always trying to draw something new. Uh, do you have any particular drawing that you've made for episodes that you're especially proud of? Well, I do try to challenge myself. I think that's kind of important. Like you don't want to get comfortable just drawing the same old things over and over again because you'll never improve. So yeah, I, I try to draw different perspectives and stuff. Uh, is there any picture I'm particularly proud of? No. No, not really. At this point, I've drawn so many pictures. It's over a thousand, which is absolutely insane. None jump out to me. No. Another question from Hester. Is there an art medium that I haven't tried that I'd like to have a crack at? Watercolor. I think that'd be pretty cool. I mean, normally I don't do the coloring at all, but I just think it'd be neat to give that a try. Uh, in terms of the actual drawings, I thought it'd be pretty neat to use like a brush and some ink, like how a, a comic book inker might do their stuff. But I also have a feeling it would take me much longer to get the pictures out, and that's not something I could be fooling around with. Uh, moving on, we have Patrick who asks, Have you tried out RimWorld by any chance? I have tried it out. I'm no good at it. <laughs> it's kind of like when I first started playing Dwarf Fortress. It's kind of just, it's hard to wrap my mind around what's what, what my options are at any given moment. I'm sure I could figure it out if given the time, but I haven't really had the time that I've wanted to devote to learning the game yet, so that's on me. Moving on, we have Matt D who asks, what's yours and Mrs. K's best recipe slash kitchen concoction? Well, I'll tell you what, Mrs. K makes a fine pizza. And I think that's one of my favorite things actually that she makes. I don't, I don't cook at all. <laughs> favorite food I make is cereal. But yeah, when she's cooking, I like the pizza. Straight up pepperoni too. I like to keep it simple, you know. Next up, we have Siona Bellamy who asks, what does Mrs. K do when she's not coloring your art? Yeah, you know, relaxes for the most part, hangs out with her sister a little bit, plays some video games actually, currently playing Stardew Valley and very excited for the upcoming Animal Crossing. But yeah, yeah, that's, that's about it. Shopping, that sort of stuff. We're simple folk here. Next up, we have a question from Birgitta Kunz, who asks, did you always consider yourself good at telling stories? Like, did you like to write story assignments? Were you considered a storyteller in other contexts? I don't think I'm a very good storyteller, honestly. Maybe it's just some weird combo of the manner in which I speak and the way I'm able to connect things. Like, I've never written a story ever. I basically just see what Dwarf Fortress gives me and try to make sense of it in some fashion. Actually, to be perfectly frank, I don't enjoy writing at all. Creative writing, ugh, boring. Yeah, I, I don't know, I don't, <laughs> to sum it up, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm gonna start digging through my community tab here on YouTube and see if I can't pull up some spicy questions. Carl Flagahorn Lorfen asks, or states, another The Long Night video whenever it gets an update. A lot of people ask about that one. It seems to have become a favorite. I don't often do mods for Dwarf Fortress, but yeah, you know, I really enjoyed that. Again, it falls into the line of like, people are here to watch Dwarf Fortress and I know I'm still technically playing Dwarf Fortress, but it's so different. I, I wouldn't completely write that off though. One day, possibly. 
Ethan Smith asks, what is the strangest thing you have slash are considering doing in Dwarf Fortress and will we see it in the next series? I always thought it'd be really fun. Um, you know, like when I do sponsored dwarves in previous series, they're usually controlled by one of my patrons, selected at random, and they get to choose little minor things for the dwarf to do. Like if they want their dwarf to go like build a little house somewhere or I don't know, some, some like become a position in the fortress. What if I took that a couple steps farther and like had every dwarf in the fortress be a sponsored dwarf? and then assigned certain roles as like, oh, this guy's the the head of the blacksmith guild. And so they have to role play that. And so all the, d the dwarves in the fortress who are blacksmiths have to like report to this person in real life and just give their concerns to them. I don't know, I think it'd be a really cool idea, but it would obviously get incredibly muddled and it's not something I wanna get myself tangled up in, but I don't know, I can't get that idea out of my head. Maybe one day, maybe one day I'll be insane enough to try something like that, but no, it's not coming in the next series, certainly. Horus Hyperion asks, what is your overall goal for your channel? That's a good one. Just to entertain, day by day, or rather week by week, I suppose. I just want to entertain people. The biggest thing that I, I really like providing to people is just a little bit of escape. A lot of people really look forward to these videos, and when you get down to it, life can just plain suck sometimes. And I know I'm not like... I'm not a firefighter. I'm not a doctor. Nothing big like that. I'm just an entertainer. But if I can give somebody something just like just to get their mind off shit. Sorry for swearing. Just for a half hour a week. Makes me feel good, you know? I think people appreciate that. That's my goal. That's about it. Nothing too big. Uh, Lord and Master Patrick asks, I really like your tutorial video. Any chance we can get another one of those? I think after the Steam release comes out, I might think about doing that again. I kind of really hate making tutorial videos. It's very boring for me. But, you know, I do like getting people to play Dwarf Fortress, so mm, it might happen. It might happen. You guys might have to push me a little bit, so keep that in mind. Andre Guardhog asks, what is your favorite creature in DF? That's a tough one. I'm inclined to say Beak Dogs, but I do also like Jabberers and pretty much any of the uh, the, the low down, deep underground creatures. Uh, any of those things, I think they're my favorite. Just the weird ones. Big fan, big fan. Uh, Bynum Boy asks, what is a place you want to build a fortress but haven't yet? A volcano. Yeah, I've never actually built a fortress on a volcano, which is a little shocking. I do plan on doing that for the next long series though. In fact, I can guarantee that's something I'm doing. Percalf asks, if you're stuck in a room with a goblin and an elf, the two of them want to see your blood all over the floor. You have a bow and one arrow left, what would you do? That's a dicey one right there, very interesting. Not most Dwarf Fortress players are going to say, oh, I would shoot the elf. You gotta think a little harder than that though. It's an elf, it's pretty frail when you get down to it. Goblins, that's a tough creature. I'm going to shoot the arrow at the goblin, and then when the elf comes at me, I'm going to beat it to death with the bow. Kingham3 asks, how long have you been playing Dwarf Fortress? Since 2011, I believe. Maybe a little earlier, 2010. Uh, Zapdos Games asks, when did you find your gift slash talent for drawing? Were there some of the events that led up to it, if that's not too personal? Well, I've been drawing since I was very little. I have always drawn, you know, up through high school, like, you know, just drawing stupid little things. I enjoy it, but nothing very serious at all. I didn't really start drawing until I started making these videos. As I said before, after I got that shout out and decided to get serious with these videos, that's when I really started drawing. And if you look at my old drawings, you can tell they're pretty darn rough. Blub a sour asks, when did you start playing Dwarf Fortress? Already addressed. And is there a story behind the name Krug Smash? Krug was the name of my very first Dungeons and Dragons character, a half orc barbarian, and he would always say Krug Smash. That's pretty much it. Alejandro Montero asks, how can your drawings be that pretty damn cool? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not too sure. Thank you. I appreciate it. Glad you like them. Weaponry and such asks, are we going to see the peaceful boys again? I assume you mean the uh, peaceful home dwarves that I just did an episode on. Yeah, I would like to. I've been playing them behind the scenes and it gets interesting. It gets interesting. I would like to peek in on them again. El Phantasma Dorado asks, how do you feel about this Chanel and the community? Oh, just great. I love it. Who the hell would have ever thought I could get a Dwarf Fortress channel up to 78,000 subscribers? And you're all just goddamn wonderful people too. I love you. Such nice comments every week. I don't say it enough. I really don't. I love you guys. Thank you all so much for your kind words. Kamziax Legendary asks, cold weather or warm weather? Depends my mood. Eduard Barrington asks, if you weren't doing Dwarf Fortress on YouTube, what would you be doing? Working in a dog kennel. I'm kind of a loser. Magari Ion asks, what advice would you give to someone who wishes to follow your steps and release similar DF related content to YouTube? Friggin' dive in. Do it. Give it your all too. I think it's the only way you can make a crazy ass shtick like this actually work. Give it your all. If you want it to work, you gotta make it goddamn work. <laughs> Best of luck to you. Kirby Cooper asks, hype. 
I know, I'm excited too. Asian Dobson asks, play Star Wars Battlefront 2, not asks, I guess, just commands me to play Star Wars Battlefront 2, the original, not the new. I don't know why, but that would be a good fit for you. I love that game. It's a great game. Nail on the head right there. <laughs> Imagine if I just changed my content to Star Wars Battlefront 2 instead of Dwarf Fortress. That'd be a little bit different. Caseless asks, how has your day been, buddy? Well, it's been pretty dandy. Thank you very much for asking. Nobody else has asked a bunch of bastards. Jeez. <laughs> it's been going fine. Thank you very much. HY asks, yes. <laughs> Uh-huh. Delarota Richard asks, being that you like dwarves, I want to know, what's your favorite alcoholic beverage? Ah, it changes frequently. Again, depends on my mood. I just had some rum last night. Uh, Kraken, spiced rum. Hits the spot, puts you where you gotta be. Darth Danger Mouse asks, magma, minecarts, and beetles. What are you planning, you mad little bastard? Well, you just have to wait and see now, won't you? It's gonna be interesting, hopefully. <laughs> Fail Matthias asks, what is your favorite color or animal? Color, I actually, I'm a big fan of the color brown. It's just so earthy, it's everywhere, I like it. Has so many different hues, tones, very useful color. Animal, I guess a dog. And with that, I think that's going to about do it for our Q&A today. Already went a bit longer than I had intended to, but that's fine. It was kind of fun actually, and I'm really glad I got a chance to work on this little project in the background here. And I hope you liked seeing it. Now, before we go, I would like to thank you one more time. I don't often get a chance to thank you guys and tell you how much all of your support and kind words do for me. Like, a lot more than you know. Big time. I don't talk about it very often. Like, <laughs> never actually, but in 2017, I lost my father. And it was incredibly painful, incredibly sudden. And really, it's, in a way, something I'm still trying to come to grips with. Like, I'm good. Don't go worrying about me at all. But it's it's good to have something to keep my mind off things, you know? And you guys help me a lot with that. So I guess, you know, when I say your support means more to me than you know, or like, I really appreciate your kind words, that's kind of where it's coming from. Like, it, it all means so much more than you know, truly. Thank you. Of course, yeah, I don't mean to take down the mood too, too much. Again, don't worry about me. I'm completely fine. No sense moping about anything. In fact, I think the best way to take on the future is with your head held high, your chin stuck out, and just just take it on, head on. And so that's what I'm doing straight into this next long series that we have going on next week, actually. A Dwarf Fortress long series, finally. And I really do hope you're as excited as I am. It's gonna be good, I'm thinking. Once more, I would like to thank you very much for joining me here today, putting up with my little, uh, my self-indulgent Q&A. Of course, I hope you had fun. And until next time, my bearded bastards. Peace.